One man. One hundred guests. One thousand drinks. Drinking with Jason. <laughs> Hey there, psychopaths. Welcome back to Drinking with Jason. I believe this is episode number 24. I am hilariously discombobulated because I have a book release coming out, so this could actually be episode 67. I'm not entirely certain. Right now, I am sitting down having some drinks with author Mark Sheldon. What's going on, Mark? It's not much that's going on here. I've got a new book coming out in July, but so I'm sort of in the same space. Basically, you are discombobulated, but excited. Well, uh, right before we get into talking about what in the hell you're here to talk about, <laughs> I might as well share what I am drinking, and I am an idiot. And like I said, I'm just my brain is everywhere, so I completely forgot to tell you this is a partial drinking podcast. I am drinking Line and Kugel's Summer Shandy, which... Uh, are you a beer drinker? I am not. Okay, then this will mean nothing to you, but for those of you <laughs> listening... <laughs> this is a really goddamn good beer. I'm not much of one for like fruity kinds of beers, but man, if you're mowing the lawn or just lazy sitting at your computer like me, it's good shit. So, so we were just talking before we came on the on the air here that you have a book coming out, a novel coming out with Crystal Lake Publishing, who usually does. <laughs> that is my dog squeaking her toy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she steps on it like it's a weight scale over and over. It's hilarious. Um, you got a novel coming out with Crystal Lake Publishing, and they are known for putting out some really cool short stories. And you were actually one of the first few authors to get a novel on there. How exactly did you swing that nonsense? Well, I actually was um, in, in one of the anthologies a few years ago, um, Don't Fear the Reaper. My short story, um, The Life of Death, was featured in that. So... Joe and I have been um, online and publishing collaborators. Let me interrupt before. you quick. The Life of Death, that's a cool name for a short. I like that. <laughs> it was actually about um, death and the birth and life of um, the personification of death. That's and, pretty um, sweet. I, I like that. <laughs> and, anyway, um, Joe, Joe, Joe is the editor and owner of Crystal Lake. Yes. And so um, when he opened up a open submission call back in, I think it was 2014 now. Yeah. Um, he notified me and let me know that they were looking for novel submissions. So I uh, submitted my book and they accepted it. Nice. Now you said this is the beginning of a new series, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Sarah Killian? What's the yes. deal? Sarah Killian, Serial Killer for Hire. Oh. Man, you've got some cool ideas. I, got, I haven't read anything here, so I don't, I don't know if they're good, but they sound fantastic. Uh, yes, um, it's basically, in a nutshell, uh, it's a woman who um, works as a professional serial killer for sort of a secret spy type organization. So it's kind of a espionage horror mashup. Espionage horror mashup, actually, that sounds yeah. sort of like the series I'm working on now. It's uh, that's interesting. How many books are you planning on doing or just go, um, go with the flow? Between three and five for now. I'm not really setting myself to a specific um, length or of the series. I'm just sort of going to play it by ear, but definitely at least three or five. So I'm always interested in finding out the differences in some of these companies and the contracts they do and stuff. How does it work for the sequels for this? Are you only signed through one book or does he have like right of first yeah, refusal? Yeah, we signed the first one and basically we're going out to see how it goes after the first. Okay, so you'll continue it either way, whether it's through them or not? Most likely. Gotcha. I've got the, I've got the basic start arc of the thing in my mind, so I definitely want to finish that off, so. Oh, that's great. I hate when I talk to an author and, and they sign for a series with some, like a big five publisher or something. And then the, the publisher owns like the characters and all the subsequent sequels. And I'm like, man, that is just, it feels like you're handcuffed. You know what I mean? I, I just don't like that. So it's, no, it's nice to hear that he only makes you sign for this one book, which he accepted. That's great. Mm -hmm. yeah. Gives you a little more leverage too, if it does well. <laughs> so. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't interrupt you. Uh, fingers are crossed. 
Okay. And this is a novel, not a novella? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, how long ago did you submit it to them? Uh, I think it was back in 2014 was when they had the open submission call. Holy shit. So you wrote this like a long time ago. Yeah, and I'd wrote it, written it a few years before that and was kind of sitting on it waiting to find the right home for it. Do you I'd... remember what it's about? <laughs> like you gave me the rough <laughs> Well, we just we went through the editing phase earlier this year, so I, I, it is re- fresh in my mind again. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was like uh, when I'm talking to someone and they ask me about a book I wrote like four years ago. I'm like, I, I don't even remember that character. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, I, there was a few moments as we were going through the editing, and I was like, oh yeah, I remember that now. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it's it's funny how quickly that goes. I've talked to a couple authors who like they're minds are like steel traps and they don't lose anything they've written. And mm-hmm. then there's me and like this book I have coming out tomorrow. I'm like, uh, who? Like what? <laughs> I just finished it like a month ago. Mm-hmm. But so how long have you been writing? Oh, uh, so ever since I could really. <laughs> Kindergarten, I was writing little tiny short stories. And, and you're what? 17, 18 now? 19? Um, <laughs> 33. See, you're lucky that you got started writing so so young. I didn't start writing till I was 30, 29. So I got I got such a late start and I'm always so jealous of people like you who've like been working on it for so long, you know? Mm-hmm. It's like a muscle, you know, the longer you work it the the better yeah. you get. Yeah, exactly. Um so were you with are you do you have books with other publishers? Have you self-published? Um, prior What's... to this, I've self-published. My first um series of books was uh sci-fi fantasy series that I self-published. Um, it was a 12-part series called The Norris and Chronicles. Basically, in a nutshell, um, Harry Potter meets X-Men and the Da Vinci Code. 12-part series? Mm-hmm. 12 novels or 12 like... 12 novellas, and they were sort of... It made a... Eat, the 12 books were sort of split into three chronicles. So sort of a trilogy split up into 12 parts. Okay. I was going to say a 12 novel series. Jeez. So there was four, four novellas per chronicle. Gotcha. Okay. Still, that's a significant amount of work. That's not yeah. bad. What did the total word count come out to for that? I don't remember. <laughs> not off the top I'm of I'm assuming head. it's over 100,000. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, so those are the books I found on you when I was looking up Sarah Killian. I, I found a couple things with Crystal Lake, but okay, I see these here. Um, and then through there, I found, uh, you say it was co- pronounced the Norrison Chronicles? Yes, N-O-R-I-C-I-N. Okay, yeah. I found a website that appears to have been built in 1878. 1878? Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a feat. There is... There is time travel involved in the Norris and Chronicles, so that would be very gotcha. appropriate. Okay. Is this your homepage, or is this just for the series? Uh, that's right. Since that was the only thing I had officially published up till now, that's sort of been my homepage for now. But I will, once Sarah is officially out, I will do a Mark Sheldon page. Gotcha. Okay. At the moment, that is sort of my home base. And I'd found what looked like a Facebook page that you've posted on three times in three years. It's, it has been a little while since I've posted on it. Um, just cause I haven't had anything come out since the last Norris and Chronicles books, which was back in 2012. So. so you only use this for publishing stuff. You don't use this for social media, obviously. Yeah. I, I do have a Facebook personal account aside from the page that I post a little more frequently on. Gotcha. Yeah. So I was trying to look you up. I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? I'm like, <laughs> I'm not finding like, okay, I gotcha. So what I did find was correct. All right. Yes. Um, so you've got the, the 12 part series. When did you start publishing that? Uh, I started publishing that in 2010, 2009, 2010. Now, is that the first thing that you published? Yeah. Okay. And then you wrote this a couple years ago, and have you started a sequel yet, or just waiting to see how this does? I'm kind of waiting to see how it goes, and then I've got the 
basic outline of what the next one will be. But have you been working on anything in between? Um, there's, I've had some short stories, and also there's another book that's been sort of sitting on the shelf. I actually wrote it around the same time as Sarah Killian. I kind of needed breaks from Sarah every once in a while just because it it's all in the first person, so it's directly in the mind of the sociopath. So needed a little <laughs> reprieve from that from time to time. Understandable. And, uh, um, I've okay. sort of got the uh, beginnings of a science fiction horror space drama that I'm sort of working on sketching out at this point. Not really at the full-on writing stage, but planning it out at least. So what do you do with your shorts? Do you send them to magazines or publishers, or you just keep yeah. them for a collection? Um, like I um, said, the I've had a, that one short um, published with Chris Blake. I had another short published with another um, anthology a few years before that. And then I um, self-published a collection of all of my shorts uh last year um that's called mores of the maelstrom okay that's got including the one that was published on chris with crystal lake and the uh the other one so you're not one of these authors who has like a trunk full of shit that you're just like hoarding <laughs> not particularly no it, uh like i said i've got that one other book that i wrote at the same time of sarah killy and i'm hoping to find a home for that and i'll probably self-publish it shortly if it if i don't find a gotcha. publisher, publisher for it yeah sounds good um so that's the one you're looking to do next and then after that might be sarah killian too or yeah something else mm -hmm. okay what's your usual like writing pace like how, how long does it take you to write a book a year half a um year? once i get to the actual writing part i usually write super fast i wrote most of I, it took me a couple of years to draft out the Norse and Chronicles, but I wrote all 12 books within a year. Okay. To the actual writing. Okay. That's not a bad pace. No. Mine's all over the place. Sometimes I'll crank out a book in a month and then the next time it takes me like a year and a half because I'm right. The books are so different for me. It's hard to describe to people who don't write, but it's like sometimes yeah. I just, I can't get this book out forever. It's weird. Yeah. That, that's kind of how Sarah was, partly because of the I kept having to take breaks from it mentally to get into a different headspace and <laughs> not climb a tower with a rifle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you seem to like to do the genre mashup kind of thing. Is that? Yeah, I I I don't really box myself into a corner. I don't really see myself ever sticking to just one genre, really. I like to keep my options open and write whatever story comes to my mind. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I, I have people tell me, well, that book's not a horror novel. And then the next person's like, well, that's not a thriller. I'm like, well, it's both. Like, <laughs> it, it doesn't have to be in a box. Right. Especially now that um, like with eBooks and all this stuff, like you can publish whatever and how you want. So you don't have to like try to make a, a publisher happy or what you think they're going to want. You know, right. until you get the book written, that style's not mm -hmm. not popular anymore, and then you're screwed. You know, like uh, when the the vampire books were huge, like I don't know, was it five years ago? When mm -hmm. when did Twilight? End? Um, <clears throat> the movies were about yeah about five years ago, and then the books had been building up a little bit before that. So, man, that there was like so many vampire books, and then that shit just crashed. <laughs> uh. Zombie stuff, I think, is still going strong, although it's annoying the ever-living piss out of me. I bitch every one of these podcasts. I bitch about all the zombie books <laughs> that people are trying <laughs> to get is, me to read. Yeah. It, it's a, that's a genre I haven't quite gotten into just because it's everything's been done, really. The one thing, if I ever did do a zombie thing, I think I would want to... It would be kind of satirical, and I would want to do, like... I think it would be absolutely hysterical if someone treat, did to zombies what um, Stephanie Meyer did to Twilight. <laughs> Wasn't a romantic zombie? A romantic zombie thing I think would be absolutely hysterical. It's completely tongue in cheek, not serious like she was with Twilight, but just 
Don't get me started on Twilight, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wasn't, there a, wasn't there a zombie young adult romance uh, series? They made a movie out of it. Shit. Oh, I can't think of what it was, but like she falls in love. This, this, this girl falls in love with a zombie and it like starts his heart beating again. So he like turns back into a person. Shit, I know that's I saw I the movie. I didn't hear about that, but yeah, that sounds like exactly the kind of thing I was thinking. So <laughs> Damn, that's I can't think of the name of that movie now. <laughs> uh yeah. Yeah, the, the, there's some zombie erotica maybe. That maybe that's the next big genre. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I might have to write that. <laughs> so what kind of stuff uh do you read? I same as my writing style, really, just about anything. Um, like a, just like I said with the Norrison Chronicles, you know, that was a mashup of Harry Potter, X Men, and the Da Vinci Code. So, <laughs> well, give me like, give me an author, somebody you're you're into right now. Um, I've been reading a lot of Rick Riordan. He does the um, Percy Jackson. Um, it's young mm-hmm. adult, but the um, Greek and mythology and. Um, I've heard good things. Uh, all of the mythologies, really. He covers Egyptian. I've been reading. I'm currently reading his latest one. Um, I've also there's a new series that just came out. Let me see if I can pull up the author's name. Um, J. S. Morin. I just discovered his book recently. It's let me pull up the. Uh, ser- series of the books. It's basically a Firefly, Star Wars kind of. Black Ocean. Yes, Black Ocean. Thank you. Oh, I've never heard of that. It's good stuff, huh? Yep. I I just I read the first book. He um you can get that one for free actually the ebook, and that's what fa- um got me into it. Okay. Well, I'll check that out then. I always like when an author makes the first book free because then I can see if it's going to be my thing or not. Yep. It definitely, as a Firefly fan, it was a kind of nice homage. I could definitely see the influences from that show on the book. Cool. All right. I haven't heard of that. I'll have to check that out. Uh, what about, um, so those were, that's science fiction. And the first one you said is like a young adult. Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you read horror or just yeah. write um, Dean Koontz was sort of my main horror influence growing up and um, also Stephen King of course <clears throat> ring the bell people Stephen King has come <laughs> up in every episode but one <laughs> everybody loves him I, I get it it's, yeah. he's my favorite but it's just it's Dean Koontz was definitely the primary influence on me I started reading his books when I was in middle school yeah, a lot of his stuff is more uh, like horror, thrillery kind of thing uh-huh. than uh, like Stephen King's stuff. So yeah. there's your genre mashup. Um, <laughs> what do you uh, you like into movies, TV, games, and shit like that? Um, I don't have, I don't really do any gaming just because I don't have the time for it. I totally would, but I try to spend as much time writing as I can. Um, movies. X Men, uh, all of the Marvel universe, of course. Did you um, see uh, Winter Soldier? I haven't yet. I work graveyard shifts, so me and my wife, we try to. We're we're usually asleep at the time when the movies are on, but we're going to we're going to work it out. <laughs> it is excellent. Yeah. I I just saw it last weekend. I loved it. Mm. Uh, yeah, we've heard nothing but good. Um. Yeah. Uh. Seven. And then, of course, the classic horror movies, Friday the 13th, Halloween. Shit, I think Seven's got to be approaching classic age now, right? Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. When did that come out? Mid-90s? Yeah, it was mid-90s. Man, I'm getting old. Shit. (laughs) No, right? (laughs) Shit, that's going to be, that's almost classic (laughs) Seven. That is just horrible. (laughs) Uh, Okay, so I'm, I'm always interested, too, to hear how do you get your writing time in like between your, you said your graveyard. So do you get writing in at work before yep, I, after? I work at a hotel? So that, um, I have a few hours at 
usually most nights I have a few hours to downtime where I, as long as I'm awake and at the job and can attend to any guests that need help, they, they're fine with me doing stuff on my downtime. So, Oh, that's nice. That's yeah. great. Mm -hmm. get, get paid to write. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's killer. Yep. Um, okay. That's, that's really nice. I, I, I talked to some who um, struggle to find writing time between kids work, mm -hmm. you know, Fortunately, I don't have the kids yet, so that makes a big difference. <laughs> nice. I just yeah. wasn't sure, like with gra graveyard shift, like, do you always work that or? Yeah, yeah, it's my okay. full time. So okay. you're used to the hours yeah. then. Yeah. Okay. I, I worked that for uh, one summer. God damn, did that mess me up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's it. It took some getting used to. It was. I used to be the part time graveyard. So I would do like three nights, whatever they needed me, and then the two nights graveyard, and that was that w that was rough. I did that for several years, and then worked my way into finally getting into the full time graveyard position. So, uh, do you sleep like that on the weekends? Do you follow yeah. the same? Yeah, on my nights off, I just stay on the same schedule because it's it's just too difficult to sure. flip flop back and forth. Uh, whenever I need to go to the doctors or anything, I just go make my appointments for the morning because I usually fall asleep around noon. So it it's I get everything I need to get done earlier in the day. And the one time I break that is when I'm on vacation with family, of course. And I'll sort of nap here and there when that happens. It sounds to me like you need to write a vampire book of some kind. Uh, that actually has been on my mind, yes. <laughs> I mean, you could do interesting things with adjusting to that life, you know? Yeah, yeah. Someone, yeah. maybe maybe said vampire works at the hotel on the night shift. <laughs> yes, I, I, the, that actually is exactly what I've been thinking. I've got a, the germs of a story working on that one. I haven't even got into the plotting um sketching out phase yet but Shit. definitely i like that idea <laughs> that's that's fun like that could be a funny story like mm -hmm. you stay a couple hours later no <laughs> <laughs> no i can't <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's good mm -hmm. so are you caught up on any of like the new horror television like um we mentioned walking dead before we started stuff like that um, I haven't been watching Walk Walking Dead um, mainly because my wife has a huge zombie phobia. So, <laughs> interesting. So, um, we we've managed to stay away from that one for her sake. Um, but I so have you never watched it. No. Oh, okay. I have been watching American Horror though. See, I'm I watched the first three seasons. Uh, I'm halfway through Freak Show, but I haven't finished it yet. What got me into it was Hotel. Obviously. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Is that the fifth season? That, that was the most recent one. That was the one that just aired. So, yeah, I think that was five. Okay. Have you gone back and watched the other ones? I've got, yeah, I have started with season one. I'm up about halfway through season two now. Cool. That That's a great show. I just, um, yeah. there, I have, there's so much good television right now. It's really hard for me to keep up with stuff. So, I end up waiting like two or three seasons and then I binge watch and then I won't watch it again for like two or three years and then I'll get caught up. The The hotel was very cathartic <laughs> as a hotel worker. <laughs> Kathy Is that, Bates, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Kathy Bates had a very relieving moment when she uh, took out some stress on the hotel guest. Um. Was that based on the serial killer who killed like a hundred people in a hotel around the turn of the century? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't even remember what that guy's name was, but he did some really messed up stuff to people. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how much of the show was taken from the actual story, but it was definitely in the show. He's definitely a messed up guy. <laughs> Okay. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm definitely gonna have to watch that. I gotta. I gotta get Freak Show finished. I just like w when I really get into work. Sometimes I'm like, 
I just get so far behind on shit. It drives me nuts. Yeah. Uh, the only one I really oh. make sure I watch every week is Game of Thrones because the internet breaks after every episode. And yeah. I know somebody's going to spoil shit for me. So, uh, um, Speaking of Game of Thrones, I actually um, missed out on not this last year's season. I only finally just got cut up on that. And I managed to avoid absolutely any spoilers on that somehow. On that what? season. Until the day when I was like getting the uh, I, I was on the last disc of uh, what was last year? Season 5? Yes. Um, so I was on the last disc of Season 5. I opened up a meme about Harry Potter and somebody meant, put in a comment about Harry Potter, bah, Jon Snow died and came back in from the dead. I'm like, you fuckers! God. <laughs> oh, that's the worst. I don't know how you avoided it for a year. <laughs> Well, you know, I I also only got cut up on Lost. I only watched Lost a couple of years ago, and I managed to avoid that being spoiled on that too. So oh. I just try not to read things on the internet. And yeah, I can't log into Facebook if I don't watch <laughs> Game of Thrones like that night or the next morning. I can't log in until I watch it because it's just spoilers like crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just scroll past usually. That one caught me because I wasn't expecting it <laughs> in, a, in a meme comment. Yeah. Well, that's Yeah, I either get caught on something like that where I, I read something that doesn't look like it applies at all or on the news thing they have on the right now. Mm-hmm. They'll have like... So I see, I've seen a couple spoilers for things on there. I'm like, God damn it. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't even look at that news highlight thing. I just completely ignore all of that. That's probably why I'm and avoid yeah that's a <laughs> that's a good plan uh it's not as bad with some of these shows like um like what netflix does when they just dump a whole season at once that's right. just awesome you know really, but yeah the, the game of thrones were still like every week it's like oh my god i can't stand this shit <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. you're obviously a, a game of thrones fan yeah. if you mm-hmm. yeah. god that show is so good yes it drives me nuts how good that show is. It's so intense. Oh, the Walking Dead used to be right up there with it. Like mm-hmm. the last couple seasons has, haven't been quite as good, but the Game of Thrones is just like getting better. It's bonkers. Yeah, and especially now that they're at the past the books, I'm sure it's going to be even more. Have you read the books? I read the first two, and then it was in the process of. Tr- trying to watch the series and it just got too it got too confusing between keeping what was going on in the book straight between what was going on in the series so I gave up after the second one but I do have them and I will surely read them at some point after Those everything. Those are huge ass books too. Yeah. It, <laughs> they, they make Tolkien look like light reading. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah I uh I don't I don't read long books as much anymore unless it's by someone I really, really like. It's such yeah. a time commitment. Yeah, yeah, it really is. <laughs> yeah, I could read like six eighty thousand word novels in the amount of time it would take me to read one of those, you know? Yeah, yeah. So um so are you caught up on any new horror movies, things like that? Like uh what did I just see? Uh The Witch, which was um, awesome. I, I have not seen that one. I lot. Like- I don't really. Pretty much all of our movies that are on going to be on Netflix because of the ske- work schedule thing. If we go to, if we're going to go to a movie, it's pro- probably more likely going to be like one of the Marvel movies or something like that because that's something my wife and I both share are pretty passionate about. So there's one that just came out on Netflix. Um, Hush. Did you see Hush yet? I have not watched Hush. I think it came out maybe three weeks ago or a month ago outstanding it was done by the guy who did oculus i don't know if okay. you've seen that uh-huh. um that's a good one that, that's on netflix too i believe but yeah hush is the same guy it's like a, a micro budget movie there's i want to say there's f- maybe four actors in the whole thing but really only two who are in it through the whole okay. movie and oh it's intense it's so well done like it, awesome it's oh, it's well. storytelling done in a really interesting way that guy, That's, he does some that's stuff. a good thing. <laughs> yeah. So check out Hush on Netflix if cool. you can. 
There's a couple of good ones on Netflix I found. Um, mm-hmm. so, and some of the worst shit I have ever seen is also <laughs> on Netflix. Yeah. <laughs> Do you ever troll some of those like one star movies to see what they're like? Um, yeah, every once in a while, just because, you know, some of the best, most entertaining movies are the worst ones. If nothing oh. else, you get a good laugh out of it. My wife loves to watch the sci fi movies like Sharknado and all that stuff just for the sheer laugh at it value. It sounds like your wife and I would get along. I have a, a <laughs> YouTube show called So Bad It's Good where we watch bad movies and shit on them. Uh, oh, nice. Bad movies that make Sharknado look like Citizen Kane. <laughs> <laughs> really interesting, interesting shit. And uh, Netflix uh-huh. is just... Although Amazon Prime has horror movies that... I don't even understand how they got made. Like who thought this was a good idea (laughs) when you were shooting this? Did, did no one around you be like, wait a minute, what (laughs) What are we doing? (laughs) Oh God. Yeah. Prime and Netflix is good shit on there. Mm -hmm. Um, So you are, uh, it sounds like you're primarily a reader then more than any other form. Have you read any, horror lately that you've really dug um let's see here i've been reading so much fantasy lately but um the last horror book that's here it was it was actually a zombie one which is unusual for me to read read zombie fiction let me see if i can pull it up It was oh. no, I'm not finding it. Sorry, <laughs> that's fine. Um, but, all right, well then, slightly changing gears. Oh, uh, actually, I'll tell everyone what I'm reading now. I just started reading a, a Jonathan Jan's book, Children of the Dark. Uh, it's really freaking good, man. That guy's such a good writer. Um, and I'm not just saying that because I had him on here. Like he, he's, it, it's a good book. I'm really liking it. Uh, it's, it's super cheap too. It's like a couple bucks. So if you get a chance to check that out. Um, okay. So if you're primarily a reader, do you read digital prints? Do you have a preference? Either or. Um, I read both. I'm, de- I definitely always, I prefer the um, hard, hard copy just because, uh, that's what I grew up with, but I definitely also like the advantage of being able to take my Kindle wherever and have a hundred books on it and be able to choose which one to read and not have to haul everything around. So, so when you go to bed at night or well, I guess in the morning for you <laughs> at noon, whatever, uh, mm-hmm. you're reading hardback. Uh, um, whichever I've, if uh, the book I'm reading currently reading is hardback, then I'll have my hardback. Or if it's on my Kindle, I'll read my Kindle. Gotcha. I do flip flop. Like uh, the Rick Riordan book I'm reading right now, we got the hard cap co- copy of that. Mainly because I usually use the Kindle if it's something if it's like a new author that I'm not sure if if I'm experimenting with it and if it if it's or if it's a um, author that I'm very committed to like JK Rowling or Dean Koontz or something like that, then I would get the hard cop- copy. So you're a collector then? Yeah. 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 If it's something I really love, I, I don't, I don't even read paper anymore. Um, I only read really digital, but mm-hmm. if it's something I really love, I go buy the paper just cause I like to have the, the copy, even if it just sits on my shelf for 30 years. I don't know. It's like a weird thing for me. Cause yeah. I, yeah. Know, We've got, between my wife and I, we're both voracious readers, so we've got like three massive bookshelves that are all double stacked and overflowing. And even then, we've got boxes and storage. Right. Yeah, we actually had to get rid of a ton of mine because it was just, it was getting out of control. Yeah. Like, Last time we moved, we actually just moved back in February, and we went to the used bookstore and got rid of some of our excess. Yeah it gets out of control really quick. That's one thing I like about digital. It's like, yeah. 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 I, Cause I used to get a lot of used book. I'm sorry. Definitely a space saver with the Kindle. 
Yeah, it's and it's cheaper too, you know, unless you're getting used books. It's like saves right. so much what we used to. Now I'm seeing all these freaking ebooks are like sixteen dollars and shit. Oh, really? Oh <laughs> yeah. One of my favorite authors has a book coming out and I want to get it because he's the shit. But I'm looking at the ebook, it's like fourteen ninety nine. It's fuck you. I can get the hardback for sixteen. Like yeah, it's uh, it's insane. Come on, people. <laughs> I, I, I can't stand that shit, but uh, you mentioned J.K. Rowling. I just finished her um, Robert Galbraith books. Yeah, I love those books. Damn, she is such a good writer. It drives uh -huh. me nuts. Yeah, the, <sighs> they, my wife just finished the most recent one too, and they're so good. You know, I was sitting there reading the last one, and mm -hmm. it occurred to me when I was, I don't know, maybe three quarters of the way through. It's like, you know... Barely anything has happened in this entire goddamn book, and I am just riveted. Uh huh. Like yeah. I don't know what I don't remember what was happening. They were doing surveillance for like the fifty millionth goddamn time, mm -hmm. and it just occurred to me, man, nothing has happened in like three hundred pages, and I am like completely oh, sucked in. Can uh. put it down. <laughs> yeah, she yeah. just she, her characters are so good, and like. Even little dramas that would bore the shit out of me if I was trying to write it, you know, or if I was reading it from someone else. God, she makes it interesting. Yeah. I, I cannot read her before going to bed because I will not sleep. Because <laughs> I will not put it down until it's done. And her, her books are like tomes, too. They're like super long. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how long those were, but it took me a lot longer to read those than usual. So I'm guessing they were. Yeah. All, like big big ass books um yeah, but yeah I mean, I, uh, as soon as i got done reading the third one i went to look for the fourth one and and there isn't even an announcement i'm like oh fuck. yeah <laughs> it's, it's like, like oh yeah this is what it was like between before order of the phoenix <laughs> oh see i didn't get into those books until like a month before the last book came out <laughs> So I didn't have to wait at all, and I just crushed those books in like four weeks. That that would have been the way to do it, yeah. I I was actually working in a bookstore at when Order of the Phoenix came out, and that, I actually hadn't been into the series at that point yet either. It wasn't until um, the next one that I um, got into it, but still the insanity for that release, because the fans have been waiting for years for that one to come out. What, it was a big, big gap. Yeah, yeah. There was a, 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 I forget how long it was now off the top of my head, but it was like two or three years. Man, <laughs> she, uh, she's an interesting character. Just the uh -huh. way she writes, I just, I yeah. wish she'd write faster. <laughs> that's that's, <laughs> I, that's what I say about all my favorite authors. Like, mm -hmm. write faster. Especially with that that last book, it, the um. The most recent um, Robert Galbraith ending on that cliffhanger. Oh <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> it's like all the first two like were very neatly wrapped up and concise and you know like independent volumes, mm -hmm. and then she does that. It's like ah. Yeah, without without giving away spoilers, there's a, a cliffhanger at the end of this, which again, in any other book, I wouldn't give a shit mm -hmm. about that cliffhanger. Yeah, like, no. The fuck do I care about? But with her, I'm like, no. no. <laughs> yes. Yeah, she's phenomenal. And uh, because of the subject matter, it's actually why I didn't want to read the Harry Potter books. I'm like, I don't read shit about some kid doing magic bull crap, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's what held me off for so long. And yeah, but my wife, I because I'm a I'm a ridiculous Stephen King fan. Like, it's not right. And uh, <laughs> I was trying to get her. We were just. Uh, I think we were engaged at that point, but she was trying to get me to read Harry Potter and I was trying to get her to read the dark tower. Mm -hmm. And we made a deal. Like we would each read it because neither one of us wanted to do it. <laughs> I read that first Harry Potter book and I was like, eh, it's all right. This is, this is some pretty kiddie shit. You know, mm. and she'd warned me like, you got to get to the book two when, when it, he gets a little older and she starts writing to, for an older, an older level, an older audience. And, uh, I got like 20 pages into book too. And I was like, fuck, I'm calling it <laughs> sick. You know? Uh -huh. And uh, fortunately she read the dark tower and she got super into it too. She's 
reading the series for the second time. So it was an ex that got me into Harry Potter. She'd only watched the movies, but yeah, it was around the time that Prisoner of Azkaban, the movie came out that she got me started on them. Yeah, I, I, I pretty much only read horror and thrillers. Um, for for the most part, you know, I still read, I read science fiction and stuff, but uh, pure science fiction, it's it's got to be re- something really good. Yeah, but, uh, I'm not much of one for. Oh, this romance between the 14 year olds, you know, I, I, <laughs> a break. And I'm yeah. reading this Harry Potter stuff, and he, I don't remember what the name of the character, Cho or something like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm like so into it, and I would go home at night, and I'm like, what is wrong <laughs> with me? <laughs> I don't care about this kind of crap. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, she just she's one of those like super rare authors that their stuff just goes across all genre like people who don't read those genres they give mm-hmm. a crap. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Whereas my stuff, you like horror and that's what <laughs> that's what you're getting. Um, yep. so back to your your writing in a little bit to completely change mm-hmm. pace here. You're doing all the genre bending stuff. Do you do that on purpose or is it just the way you write? Like you're just interested in all these things. So you kind yeah, of, match that's, up. it's really just the way I write. I'm have so many interests that it, that's how it comes out. And like I said, I don't really want to box myself into a corner. I just write whatever idea comes to my mind. And usually that's a combination of all my various influences. Gotcha. So you're not saying I want to write a science fiction horror story. Yeah. It's just whatever yeah. you have. Yeah. I I don't force myself to write if I don't have an idea. I'm not one of those people. Uh, I'll wait until I have an idea that hits me and th- then I'll write it down regardless. Are of, you uh, a pantser or a plotter? A plotter. You, you, do you do meticulous outlines or? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the one exception to that was actually Sarah Killian. I just sort of did that one off the, as I was going along, I didn't do any, um, I've got an overall idea of the s- series, but I didn't uh, sit down and detail out every menu detail before writing just cause I wanted to try it. But for Norris and Chronicles, I, like I said, I spent two years plotting and sketching and coming up with, <laughs> the overall story God damn. Before, I, before I even started writing the, writing it down and that's why when I finally started writing it only took a year to write the 12 books okay so did you like the way you wrote Sarah Killian did you enjoy the process of discovering it as you went uh, yeah I definitely preferred the plotting it out but it was a, it was a nice change it was nice to have a different way of doing it. Gotcha. And since, no, with, this one is, uh, since with this series, I'm not boxing myself into a corner. Like, for example, um, Harry Potter, seven books. This one, it's more like the Robert Galbraith where it could potentially just go on. Gotcha. Yeah, I remember reading about her saying she was going to do seven books, and I'm like, how the hell do you know that that far ahead? Like reading book one, that's crazy. I can't, I can't imagine that, but yeah, she did the same thing. I did just draft, have a sketch of the entire thing before <clears throat> even starting on book one. I'm a, a pantser at heart, but my, the series I'm working on now, it's like getting more and more complex. And I've had to, I don't write an outline, but I've been sitting and thinking it out long before writing it which i normally don't do i normally just here we go and uh, so i kind of just discover it as i'm going um and god damn i am the shittiest plotter <laughs> ever like it makes me work so slow it drives me nuts i'm looking forward at my next book i think is going to be pantsing again and i'm like thank god <laughs> i just suck so bad at plotting it's like for some reason, I can't pull the trigger on stuff. I don't know why. It's a weird the thing, thing that I like, the reason why I plot everything out is that what I love most about movies, books, any story are when the ones that 
when you watch it a second time, it's a completely different mm-hmm. story. Like The Sixth Sense, for example, where you know that plot twist just completely changed how you rewatch it. Oh yeah, and you really can't achieve that without you know having your entire story figured out when you sit down and same thing with Harry Potter, you know, like she was able to weave in all of those plot twists and developments and linking all seven books together in one massive story because she figured everything out before she ever started writing the first one. Oh yeah. It's so important. Like for mysteries, I don't know. I don't know that you could successfully write one. No, I, I, I say that I'm sure there's someone who's like, I do it. Fuck you. But you know, <laughs> for 95% of them, I can't imagine you could do it. Same with thrillers. Most of the really good thriller novelists I know are very detailed plotters. Um, that's why I write horror. Do any foreshadowing, you gotta, <laughs> for the foreshadowing, I just, yeah. Yeah. With my horror novels, if I get stuck on something, I just have a monster break down the door and then <laughs> <laughs> we're going again. Somebody died. Here we go. <laughs> so you've got this book coming out next is i'm sorry was it june uh july july okay i've got someone else with crystal lake coming on next week i think his comes out in june i'm so goddamn mixed up man oh my god <laughs> <laughs> it's so Ugh. bad uh uh july what does crystal lake do for you um I- i've had i've had a few people on here who do short stories are they going to they're going to put it in paper, I'm guessing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, there will be paper or any book. What do you? What about like audio rights and stuff like that? Do they take those? Do you have those? Um, yeah, I believe he. I believe Joe mentioned there will be an audio book coming out as well. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. You're an audio book fan. Yeah. I don't listen I, to them as much as I do the reading, but I, I do listen to them from time to time. Listen to them a ton in the summer when I'm if I'm going for like a walk or something. But in the winter, I, I, don't, I don't listen to too much. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of them. And uh, man, their their sales growth has been huge the last couple yeah. of years. Yeah, so, Audible. <laughs> yeah, Audible, I- exactly. <laughs> God damn dog. I think my dogs are wrestling, as always. They don't do shit all day. They sleep until I start mm-hmm. doing this. But, but, yeah, they, yeah, they spot it. Yeah, it's Royal Rumble. Yeah, they're plotters. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> So hopefully an audio book and then I'm assuming it'll be available. Amp- God damn dog. <laughs> Just hang on one second here. Kenzie, be quiet. Quiet. Delivery guy might be here. She, she sees that UPS truck pull up <laughs> and she just loses her shit. Uh, where was I? Uh, oh, I did <laughs> distribution wise, uh, I'm assuming it'll be Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Apple. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. All of those. So what have you like, is this your first, this is your first traditionally published novel? Yes. I shouldn't say traditionally published. They're well, micro yeah. press, but where yeah. you're not doing all the, right. The yes. minutia that is awful. Mm hmm. You liking it? Yes. <laughs> it's definitely nice having assistance. <laughs> I, I just spent this week doing my paperback and all my ebooks and uploading everything. I'm like, oh. Yeah. I, I definitely oh. am enjoying not having to do the ebook. <laughs> oh. I, I did all the ebook formatting for the Norris and Chronicles. And, uh, <laughs> Because I was uh, publishing through Smashwords, so they are very, very, very particular about how you format your ebook, which is good for the. Uh, I uh, I appreciated it, and I that's one reason why I stayed with them because you know it was good for quality and quality assurance and all that. But boy, am I glad to have someone else do that this time around. I Smashwords has caused so many people so many problems. It's yeah, they're. I think they call it their meat grinder is what you put the book in and it yeah. spits out the ebook, man. Yeah. I've, they give out some weird errors that I don't really get errors from them. I keep my manuscript super clean and um, I've kind of right. got the, I've kind of got, got the whole ebook formatting down. The problem is I make different ebooks for each 
retailers. So like Amazon oh. gets their own links, Kobo gets their own links. You know, that just takes forever. But yeah. man, Smashwords, God damn. And their website, it looks like it was built around the same time yours was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the that's actually a really good competitor to them now, Drafted Digital. I don't know if you've Drafted Digital okay. used or heard of them. Um, uh, like I've been out of the self publishing thing for a few years now since Norks and Chronicles finished, so I haven't. Yeah, well, they're maybe two years old, three years old, okay. maybe three years old. But uh, yeah, they're fantastic. Uh, you can give them any piece of shit manuscript you have, and they'll they'll somehow get it formatted automatically. It's pretty nice. Uh, but I've been using that. So anybody. I get this, this audience is like half readers, half authors. So mm-hmm. any authors who are looking for help formatting, go to draft to digital. Even if you through them, if you upload your manuscript, they'll spit out EPUBs and Mobis you can use, and they don't care if you upload them to other sites. So they're, they're really cool. They That's... just beat the brakes off of Smashwords. So <laughs> dealing with Smashwords is just the worst. <laughs> They pay me every three months. Get the fuck out of here every three months. It's nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> I get paid monthly by draft to digital. But anyway, rant over. <laughs> Anything else uh, you got coming up? How can people get a hold of you? Facebook, um, which you never, yeah. check, never post. <laughs> um, easiest on my website. Um, I actually have my email listed, and then I check that most frequently. And I do check my Facebook. I don't post as often as I probably should, but but if somebody messages you, there you. Yeah, I'll I'll get any messages they send me. Cool. Okay, so that was uh, n o r i c i n dot webs dot com. Yes. Cool, man. It's good having awesome. you on. Appreciate it. Thank good luck you. with the book. Thank you. Been good and coming up. <laughs> <laughs>